we will be looking at Maxwell equation number two. All right, now let us honor, uh, who exactly am I honoring again? All right, fear not people, because this is not a picture, a black and white picture of the evil, evil Osama. Instead, this is a picture of one of the greatest scientists of all time, James Clerk Maxwell. He unified electricity and magnetism to one great subject, electromagnetism. And using four different equations, he masterfully stitched together two almost impossible to unify subjects. And we are exploring the second equation that he made. Go watch the first equation. Talking about the electric field. <clears throat> and you also have to put the onion ring, or closed integral for sciencey people. Dot D A is equal to Q over epsilon naught. Our good friend epsilon naught. Everybody knows who, who he is, unless you're new to the series. The other form of this equation also says, well, E, well, dot producting E by <coughs> divergence. Oh God, I wrote delta. Well, I guess I have to go upside down. Uh, let's try and do a handstand. No, I cannot do a handstand. That was pathetic. Well then, I guess I'll just do the classic of rotating. It looks the same after you've handstanded, right? All right. So, divergence dot E is equal to Rho over our good old friend epsilon naught. So those are the two forms of this equation, but they basically say the same thing. They basically say the same thing how? Well, in a way, this and this are basically the same thing, but written in different science ways. So, that's basically what Maxwell equation one was, just to give you a quick recap. And now, number dos. Do these exist, first of all? Yes, it is possible to isolate a proton or an electron. Does it this exist? Well, let's find out. No, it does not. Just remember Abraham Lincoln's words. You cannot separate the North from the South. Well, that's, I actually have no idea if he said that. I'm just saying something related to the Civil War. All right, so, basically, if it did exist, it would look like either this or this, since, like during the Civil War, you cannot separate the North from the South. Because, well, what happens is, when you chop something like a magnet into pieces, then a new south appears, and then a new south appears, and then another and another and another, until eventually you die from cutting a magnet all your life. Well, does it exist? Of course, we have it all around us. Hey, take this electric field, and then the minus will just haul the electric field to it even more and more until eventually all the crap has gone to the electron and the proton is homeless and with nothing. Sad, isn't it? All right. And now, the test. Does the magnetic dipole exist? Yeah, we have it all around us. Oh. The only example of it is a magnet. Oh, so I guess we don't have it all around us. All right. So, does it exist? Yes. It looks like this. Or for those of you with horseshoe magnets out there, 
where those and have it like this. But nobody cares about that type of magnet. Sorry, horseshoe folks. Anyway, the ball magnet would have the north giving all the crap to the south, much like a proton giving st uh, all the crappy uh, electric field to the <coughs> electron. The north gives all the magnetic field to the south. That's why they are attracted together. Well, so, if you want to be very attractive, then become either a North Pole or South Pole. And that's how to get a girl. F so, now let's say we put a flux over here. And you can see the arrow says hi, and then the arrow says bye. So, you get the lesson. What comes in must come out. And that's an analogy of poo- oh. We don't talk about that here at Mary Times Lab either. Yeah, no, 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 no. Instead, we're going to do something else related to the bathroom. What we're gonna do, let's say, that you got a sour, but you're afraid of sewer monsters. And so you don't crawl into the sour. Instead, you just wait there. And you suddenly turn the faucet on and stuff starts pouring in. And then you waste your life enough, and suddenly four liters of uh, crap in your tub starts uh, filling your uh, flooding your tub. That's how much you've wasted your life, just trying to get water in your tub. And now you'll waste even more of your life watching all of that crap drain go down the drain. So that means the net sum is zero because it has four liters, and then. The four leaders say bye. Much like me. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you next time. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Nope, nope, nope. That's not the end of the lecture. You idiots should have known. Well, I'm not calling you uh, smart guys out there idiots. And you physicists. And mathematicians. Man, there's a lot of people out there. I've been waiting so long for this to happen. Now comes the subject of the video. Maxwell Equation 2! This time we don't have to do the handstand, which I pathetically failed at. So, <clears throat> dot product, the divergence in B is zero. Because they're orthogonal, which is fancy, fancy science term for perpendicular. And then, you also have the integral of b dot d a is zero because, of course, what comes in must come out. Well, equation number one is e dot d a is equal to charge over our good old friend epsilon naught. Now, you might be asking, why is this zero, Professor Suborno, but this one isn't? Well, that's because an electric monopole exists, but a magnetic monopole, on the other hand, doesn't. All right, so now let's get a box for another analogy. These outer lines, and pour in some good old magnetic field and drink it. Just kidding, just kidding. You can't drink magnetic field. A lesson for you boys and girls out there. So now, now you know what's in the box. Now you finally know what's in the mystery box. Air and some magnetic field, but that's beside the point. All right, so the magnetic field enters in through, let's say, face number one. Now this bottom face in number two, this uh, <coughs> side one in number three, this one in number four, this front one in number five, and this top one in number six. All right, and so you can see that it enters through number one and leaves through number three. Meaning, number one has a positive flux and B2, actually B3 meanwhile, has a negative flux. Well, it's actually minus BA. 
because what comes in must go out. So all the rest are zero. So we don't really care about them. Now the thing is, one is zero degree, meanwhile three is the other one. Oh uh, yeah, zero, 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 zero. Now you might be asking, Professor Sabuno, all this study, all this work, a 20 minute lecture for zero? Remember, us Indians invented zero. And this is our gift to the world.